Hi guys, um, welcome to Unity Project Maya section. Um, I'm not doing pictures on this because it would take forever and video is easier to understand. So, sorry for the whirring fan, also I'm using my internal mic and it's awful garbage. Um, I didn't bring my good mic here and I'm, I'm not at my house. So anyways, welcome to Maya. Sorry, that was too, that was too quick. Let's delete that. Alright, so when you're in Maya, uh, it's a little overwhelming because there's like a trillion buttons and like all these menus and tabs. Ignore everything and just follow what I do. So first you're going to create a polygon primitive, not a NURBS. NURBS are for nerds. Do a polygon. So you do a cube, it's going to appear right here, alright? I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Maya interface. Uh, if you want to move your camera around, and you really need a mouse for this, if you have a trackpad, just don't. Uh, you need like a proper mouse, right click, left click, middle mouse, that sort of stuff. So, to move uh, your camera, hold down the alt button, or I guess the command, no, maybe not command, control, maybe control on Mac. This is for Windows. If you're on Mac, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, alt and left click will move you around. Uh, mouse wheel out and in will zoom out and in. Pretty easy stuff. Uh, if you also want to zoom out and in with right click, you can hold alt and right click and do that for like a more fine, like smooth, but I just do the janky, chunky one. That's kind of all, oh yeah, if you need to like, uh, transform or translate, I don't know what you would call this, but basically if you just need to, you know, get a position, you click down the mouse wheel and that's why you need like a proper mouse. Anyways, that's a little introduction to that. When you have an object, you've got a few things you can do. Press W. Hey, look at these. They let you translate your boy. Uh, hey, look at this. If you press E, you can rotate your boy. That's cool. R, you can scale your boy and make him real tall. As you can see, you can also control all those through this whole little screen here, but that's really dumb. And unless you're like a cool mathematician, you're not going to do that. Or if you want like really specific transforms. Maybe sometimes you'll do that. I'm kidding, you don't have to be a cool math magician. Um, anyways, math magician. Um, what you need to know is that right-clicking makes things show up. Right-clicking is how you get to most of your menus. Ignore this, these don't exist until later and you actually take a Maya class. Um, but this is the wrong menu unless you're trying to select certain things. So normal right click lets you select like vertexes, so like the little points on your cube. You have edge, the edges of your cube. You've got the faces, the flat parts of your cube. And then you just got your whole dang cube. Um, so what we're gonna do in order to make our squibble squabble uh, creature is we're gonna hit the bottom of this guy right here with the face selection, right? Anything you're making with Maya, uh, usually you're going to be doing this thing called extrude face. So when you extrude a face, you, you hold shift click, and that makes this whole menu come up. So it's different from right click by itself. This is shift right click. You get a whole different menu. It's a whole new world. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, this takes like weeks to get accustomed to, and I took a class in it. Trying to go over it all at once is kind of a pain. <sighs> Anyways, um, extrude face. Yeah, so go down to that option with the face selected that you want to extrude. And extruding is literally pulling out a whole other cube out of the cube, or whatever shape it is that you have. That's that's neat. Um, so we got this little cube thing, right? Wah, 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 wah. So you can scale it. You want to make sure you do your scales and you know, translations, rotations, while you're here. Um, it can get a little funky. You can hit W, E, R, but then it kind of gets out of the actual, um, what do you call it, the uh, extrude mode. So let's back up. And also be careful, if you hit three, so you can get different modes of how you're viewing your object. You can see a smoothed mode here. So this is one mode, if, and I mean like one on your keyboard, one through nine. Basically one is your square, three is like a smoothified square. So you can see we actually still have the extrude here. If I back up again, or back up a 
punch because I was messing with that, you'll see we've got kind of a ball out of our square. So you can see a good effect. No, I'm okay. Um, you can see uh, with pretty good effect when you extrude, it makes all these extra planes, but in one mode, it's still flat. So you need to make sure if you go back on something that that's like not happening because it'll, it'll have this effect. Basically, you made a whole new uh, set of faces. Um, this is taking a long time to get to the point I was trying to get to. So uh, this is a long video, I apologize. Let's just get right to it. So you're gonna extrude the top face, right? Bring it up. Hit the scale box. You have to hit one of these scale boxes. Don't move it at all, but it'll make a little square appear in the center. That allows you to do all three of them at the same time, right? So that's fun. Um, let's just keep doing this, messing around with it a little bit, right? So let's bring it out a tiny bit. It's got a fun hat now. He's graduating. Um, and then we're going to bring it down, right? And this is looking a little weird right now because we've inverted effectively the shape. But just don't worry about that right now. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to... Oh, God. Yeah, okay, we're still fine. So now we're extruding up. It's no longer, like, funky like that, like it was. And now he's got, like, a really horrifying hat. This, this, this isn't... Yeah, this is more of a lamp than a squid. Um, here's the important lesson. If you want to, you can just delete everything you did start over um, <laughs> um, so let's let's try it again all right so but you're, you're getting the hang of this now you see all right so I'm extracting making this cool little face sort of thing all right okay and so let's let's make this like kind of thin because the squid will sort of have like this sort of deal and then let's like extend it out, make it wider. Yeah, this is looking more similar to how I made it originally. And then we can do some of this, yeah. All right, and now he's got a funky, he looks like a chest piece. That's cool. All right, um, or like a spear tip, a very blunt spear tip. All right. Um, now, uh, the other thing you can do, this is again, shift right clicking you can smooth your object. And this is actually important to getting kind of a certain shape. So now you see we've got more of like a a doodle. I think, I don't know, it's just a weird geometry shape. Um, it's a pineapple, yeah. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select four faces. Shift, click to select multiple faces at once. That's, that's good to know. Uh, let's extrude all these. And you see how this menu comes up? It, tells you like info about the thing that you're extruding. If you have multiple faces selected, you can turn keep faces together off. So see what happens when we turn it on. They'll all blow out together like that, so they'll all expand. But we don't want that. We want like a four-legged squid mutant. So we're gonna keep faces together off, right? And now these legs are actually um, separated. So together, separate. Cool. Let's extrude again. But, you know, this time we got to kind of mess around with this. This little button here is kind of important. Uh, if you're extruding, you're extruding out from the original face. If you want to do a global extrude kind of like this, then uh, you click this, it'll turn sideways, and it's going by global values. So that's fun. Um, let's do this. Do that again, maybe? Let's see. Uh, this is a whole mess now. Um, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, okay. Another good lesson. Um, because this is basically where we're going to leave this probably. But um, if you want symmetry on your object, which maybe I should actually be a little more careful about that. So, again, let's make sure. Yeah. So now we do a new extrude, pull these out, put them a little wiggly in, like that, that's cool. Um, and then we will unselect that. I'm hitting Q 
Uh, so like how I was showing, you get all of the all of these guys. Q just kind of gives you your default like select stuff. So if you got this, you don't want to deal with it. You just just hit Q. If you ever have any issues, sometimes there's like a weird. If your model ever looks like this with this whole thing around it and it won't go away, you might be in a, be in a weird mode you want to get out of. Just hit Q, and that'll fix it. It won't in that case because I was on two mode. Two mode shows you your blocky version and then your smooth version. But sometimes you get it and it isn't. That. I'm explaining way too much. Um, okay, so we got this whole thing. What we're gonna do? We're gonna select half of our model, right? And if you got a really complex model or really tiny geometry or uh, faces rather, you can hit uh, spacebar and it'll show you all these different modes. Basically, in order, you got your top, your y-axis view, your perspective, which we were working in before, your front, which is the one you would use in this case, and then your side. These are all very useful. Um, if you hover over one with your mouse and then hit space again, it'll become the main view. Cool. I'm giving you a mini lesson in Unity. And all for free. I'm not even getting paid for this. You, you, should, you should pay me if you want. Just if you feel like it. Um, so what I'm realizing now is this is actually our front view of our guy. Uh, but you know, we, we can fix that with a little thing I like to call rotate Y 90 degrees. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do negative 90. Um, when you're making all these changes, you see all these poly extrudes, you're putting a lot of information in your model and it's, it can kind of be a pain after a while. There's a bunch of menus they end up creating, like, you look at all this, this is basically everything we've been making. So if you go to edit, delete by type, history, it'll get rid of all that stupid stuff. You don't need it, you're not using it. Um, the interesting thing is you can still, you can still undo, redo, it's just control Z, control Y. Stuff, but um, yeah, that's that's neat. Where was I? Um, okay, so we rotated our guy. Uh, we deleted a history, non deformer history. There's different types of history. Maybe that's not what I was thinking of. I think I was thinking of freeze trends. Uh, yeah, freeze translations. Okay, so that last thing I was saying was good to do as well. But if you want to just reset your guy to his default. Um, status on all the translate rotate stuff, freeze transformations. You'd think reset, but just do freeze, I guess. I don't know, maybe reset's fine too. I, I don't use it. Um, there's so many buttons. <laughs> um, all right, next, select half this guy, and you'd think just delete's fine, right? But, and it might be, I don't know, but the way I learned it was to actually do uh, shift delete, or no, not shift delete, control delete. I think this has something to do with deleting the vertices alongside the faces. It might not matter in this case. So you see we've got like this sh half shell of our dude. If we want to mirror it, we go into the shift right click, we do a mirror, and then you've got mirror axis position world. That's good because he's right in the center of the world our project, right? So we do mirror direction along the x-axis, so I guess left to right, and we're going to do uh, negative, because it's going from the right side to the left side. I guess you consider that negative. So boom! We have a full boy, and with all of that weird extruding we were doing, he's still got um, symmetrical legs. That's fun. So, you know, this is pretty good. Um, but maybe you want to make a texture for this boy, right? Uh, and this is where this is going to get complicated and where it's going to take a long time if you actually want to make like a squid when you could really just make a unity object that does just as well. So there's no point for me to make this uh, 15 minute video so far. But we're going into it. We're going to show you every last detail. So go into your UV uh, window right up here. Go to the UV editor, right? Okay. This is your model. This is your model's faces, broken apart, and showing you all the little bits and pieces. Cool, right? So, um, these are not very well made. 
So, hi. Oh, thanks. I got a, I got a little squid man. A little bloodborne man. A mushroom boy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, so let's select this. We, we didn't want what it gave us by default. We're gonna make our own. So create. This is the UV toolkit. If that isn't appearing, I think you can do... Is it Windows or Tools? Yeah, if you hide the UV toolkit, you can show it from Tools. So this is in Tools, right? If it doesn't appear for you. So we're gonna create, out of this that we have selected, make sure you have it selected on the other screen. We're gonna make an automatic. Okay, that's pretty good, right? We got some legs, we got the little nubbins on the ends of the legs. And you can actually get kind of like, you know, the feedback of where, where, what is this leg? Oh, it's a piece of this leg, right? But this is kind of messy right now. So what you want to do is you want to, um, and you can also select these as UV shells, but you start taking these and you, yeah, it is the edge. Okay. So you take the edges of an object and you're like, okay, this connects to this, right? That's cool. So now go into the cut and sew menu. Create doesn't matter anymore, it's all cutting and sewing. So we know these are parts of the same thing. We're gonna sew it, right? That looks like a mess. Let's uh, UV shell it. So like right click, UV shell, click it. And then um, let's go to unfold. This is the other thing we're gonna need. So unfold it. Holy crap, it's a whole thing and it's nice and neat. Nice. Uh, let's find its next piece. So its next piece connects to this boy. Uh, we're in, should we mess with that? I guess we can, yeah. Okay. So... We've got all these boys. Let's, let's just cut along the bottom of the squid. Let's get the legs separated from the body. Because we want the legs together, we want the body as its own thing. So, cut those, right? And then just UV shell select all these boys, and let's unfold them again. So it looks pretty much the same, but now you see these are separate objects. So we can make all the legs their own little daily things. Awesome. I usually, just as a rule of thumb, keep everything tiny, keep the UV inside of this big square from zero to one on either, on the X and Y axis here. Um, but yeah, so let's go back to this, go back to edge, and start selecting. I do it one at a time to be safe, but you might be able to do two at a time. I don't know, we can try it with the next one, see if it's faster. Oh, not face. All right, then we go back to edge. And then, so, UV shell, unfold. So hey. We got a whole tentacle right here, just hanging out. Let's scale it down, because we really don't need that much detail. These are going to be flat colors, right? Um, so put it up there, by the feet. And you know what? Just to keep it sort of uh, organized, let's see. This is the bottom, you see? It's, it's showing green on the other interface. So let's take the whole shell, let's rotate it around, and now it's top to bottom. Let's make it even cooler. Uh, let's see which one of these feet connects. It's this one. So let's just put that down there. So you're just making logic of, like, basically skinning your model. This is like virtual taxidermy. It's the best. It's real cool. Good times. So let's go to the next one. I was saying before, let's try doing two at once, right? So let's sew all these together. Oh god, why did Unity start up? That wasn't supposed to happen. I didn't do um, let's unfold it. It actually works fine. So, yeah, that's okay to do. Um, oh yeah, that just happened by accident. But if you ever want to, like, zoom in on something that's really tiny, if you hit the F button, or maybe not that's really tiny, but if you just are looking for a certain object, if you hit F, uh, like that, it'll give you, like, a centered view of it. And occasionally you get, like, some distortion on your camera controls. Uh, that's a good way to just kind of reset the sensitivity, I guess, would be the way to put it. So, let's do this again, and we're just going to keep sewing together, UV shell, unfold. Okay, okay, so this is maybe where we want to be a little more patient. Let's do this one at a time, because I think that's what caused that issue there. See, 
See, there's 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 a method to my madness. I know things happen, and you want to be careful about them. Sometimes your legs get huge, but you just scale them right back down and keep working. Um, I, I bit off more than I can chew here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know why I did so many things with this project. It's gonna take a million years to do all this. Why do we have to make a making of? We should have we should have done a making of. In, in the process of making of... Because now I'm just making it again. That's very confusing. Uh, Alright. Totally not even going to edit this either. That's, that's how professional I am. You're going to see every... Uh, every bead of sweat on my brow as I make this horrible mess. We got one more. Yeah, we got one more. One more, one more. So, you shall unfold. You, you see how tedious this can become. And I didn't do any rigging or animating on these characters. So this is just to do textures, right? This is UV unmapping. If you ever heard UVs, this is not ultraviolet. This is like... I don't actually know what UV stands for. Uh, that shows you how much I know. Definitely hire me. Uh, if, if you've got a company in the games industry, because you can tell I'm, I'm a knowledgeable guy. Alright. So, maybe there's a better way to do this. I don't know. I was never taught. Oh, Jesus. What did I do? Oh, I didn't select the top one. See, there's, there's, there's always a reason. Everything happens for a reason. There's no mistakes. There's just happy accidents, and if they're not happy accidents, then they're opportunities to learn from your horrible failures. Um, and, you know, that's life. So, let's go, let's maybe organize these out a bit. It's this, goes to this guy. Oh, yeah. We're probably gonna make all these smaller, because they're not very significant. This goes to these guys. And this foot is the only one left, goes to this guy. We don't need to rotate those, because it doesn't really matter. They're just the bottoms of the feet. Alright, so that's all done. Uh, let's go back to our main view for a sec, just move this out of the way. Let's see, so that's the front of our guy, and you can see these white lines that we're making. Also, you can see, like, kind of, I'm off-center of my squid. So just, uh, object mode, click on my squid, F. Now I'm rotating around. See? applications. That's all you gotta learn. Just be like, why is this doing this thing? It's stupid. I don't want it to do that thing. That's how you do that thing. That's learning. Um, so here's the back of our boy. That's gonna be a solid color. We don't care. Uh, this is the front of our boy. This matters. Let's make this kind of big. Right? Alright. That's enough for two. Okay. So this, this can be big, so we know it's important. Oh. Oh. Where'd you come from? Did I... I left it out. Yeah, I left it out. Oops. Alright, we had one more to do here. So let's just select that, sew it, UV shell it, unfold it, nailed it, small it. Okay. And then, so we know this is the big one, this is the small one up the back. Here's the sides. Just kind of leave them like this. So let's also see... Oh god, I'm, I'm moving. I shouldn't move. Sorry about that. Uh, my, my work process, it's, it's just... It's natural. Things move all over the place, but we've, we've got boundaries in a uh, recording session. And a monitor capture. Monitor capture. Uh, okay. So let's just do, like, wowsh, wowsh, wowsh. Cool. Yeah, this, this is super messy. Could maybe put this closer to the like that. These could be small, but whatever. I kind of like little Matryoshka balls. Okay. So that's done. That's your UV map. It could be better, but actually, yeah, let's make it a little better. Okay. Um, these guys are all going to be together, you figure, right? It doesn't, doesn't need to be all uh, separated in the sections. And this kind of just becomes how you mess with this. You just be like, all right. Do these need to be separated? No? Alright, make them all one. Because then it becomes a cleaner texture when you get to that point of 
actually making the textures from the UV map. So this is the whole pack of the character. Okay, so that's cool. It's just wrapping around the back, and then we've just got the front as its own little face. So we know that's the face, that's where we're putting the face. Awesome, perfect. Now, um, there's different ways to do this, mess with it. Uh, the just full on straightforward way, hit the camera button, take a selfie, all right? So now this, I have this set to another project I was working on, the horror, uh, is a character of mine. So we don't want that though, um, we want it somewhere else. Uh, let's put in Squabble, because this is my original Squabble file. So let's put it in images, and we'll call him uh, tutorial squabble. Uh, texture. Wait, no, UV map. We'll call it UV map. It's UV map. It's not a texture yet. So that's the UV. Saving it as. Ooh, IFF. I don't know. PNG. Uh, this isn't going to be a very detailed model, so do 1024. These will automatically set to each other. 512 is like pretty low resolution, I would do 1024 for anything you're going to be looking at close up, um, and then just higher by increments of that, so 1048 is even better, but it's a bigger file size for that texture. That's like, that's like main character texture size. These, these guys are main characters, but they're tiny, so who cares. Alright, um, so, I mean, in my original, I did add, like, some little extra bits of detail, like, I took these little fins and I kind of blew them out like this. You can do that if you want. Um, I don't think that'll actually change our uh, UV. It might a little bit. So let's just maybe unfold it again. Yeah, it changes it a tiny bit, but it's still fundamentally the same information and lines and faces and stuff, so you don't have to worry about it too much. So we got kind of a dorsal. Is that a dorsal fin on a squid? Uh, let's save this again, because we changed it a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're overwriting. Close out of that. Close out of that. Um, what do we do need to do now? We've, we've got ourselves in a pretty good position right now. Right? So we got our squid boy. That's what he looks like, uh, unsmoothened. It's a little jaggy. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's smooth him again. There, now he looks closer to, even to our uh, previous setup. Now, if you do that, I'm learning myself here. Oh, that's nice. So if you smooth, it'll actually keep the information up to date from the texture. Who knew? All right, just save that a third time. Uh, this is where we have to actually exit Maya and uh, finagle with our dude that we made. So let's go into game dev where I saved that. Um, I also didn't save this project, I'm not planning to because I'm not keeping it, but I'm just showing you how to do for your purposes. Um, so let's see, so these are the textures that I did for the actual in-game model, real pretty. Uh, let me move over here because this is like where everything is. So we got our UV map that we made go into Adobe Creative Cloud, which you also conveniently should be able to get for free with a student account. It'll take forever to load applications because uh, it's kind of junk that they made it a cloud service, but that's what they did. Um, so let's try opening it again. Hopefully it works this time. Right? Okay. Okay. You're holding me up here. This is going to be a power hour presentation. We're, we're at a half hour. This is good stuff. We're, we're almost done. We basically made the model. You could literally just jump off if you didn't care anymore. Um, but I'm just showing you the way to do if you want to learn from the master. Obviously, the master who cannot load Adobe Creative Cloud. Can I just open Photoshop from here? I can. Ha! Ah in your face. Look at that beautiful, colorful lady. She's got like glass and geometric things. I don't know if she's melting or 
fragmenting. I don't know. It's kind of scary. All right. So we don't we don't even need this. We want to make a whole new file. So let's just load in our PNG that we got for our tutorial squabble UV map. Cool. Close that other one. All right. This is kind of confusing to look at, right? This is this is stupid. Um, let's go. Let's go make a background UV color. Let's just make it black. I see a UV map and I want it painted black. Cool. All right. Now you have all the information you need. Now click that little magic wand tool. We're gonna select everything at once, and uh, we're gonna go to select inverse. And now we're selecting all of our boys, right? Uh, let's make a I don't know. Let's make a green squabble this time, right? Choose whatever dang color you want. It's your squabble, swivel. You could give it a new name. It could be Squabble. Like the famous spelling game of spelling. Squabble. Uh, what's the longest word in Squabble? I don't know. Look it up. Stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that was rude. Um, let's give him a purple eye. Alright. So just this is around where the base is. Squabble just has a big eyeball on its face, right? That's cool. You know, actually, let's let's do like a little, get a little in depth here. So right there, it gets a little darker, and then and then we go to the iris. We'll just make black on the inside there. Whoop, let's go down a little bit. I'll do that. Try it again. Ah, it doesn't have to be perfect. His eye is a little off kilter. And then, you know, you know it really gets them going. Uh, they really like it when you get that little glint of light just kind of going. So look how much depth that adds. Oh, it's so cool. It's, it's so realistic. Yeah. All right. Um, and then, you know, we can maybe add, like, uh, uh, let's, let's do this. Here. Um, turn down the font a little bit, so we have space. I suck at making tutorials. Yeah. See, you can do whatever you damn well please. Like that. So I suck at making tutorials. We'll be on the dorsal fin. That's like his battle cry. Um, and now, okay, this is a safety measure that I do. Um, oh, is this going to cause... No, this won't cause an issue. Alright. This is a safety measure that I do. Um, just let's let's eye drop these, and just kind of tap them a few times, hit them a few times with that paint bucket. The reason I do this is because um, when we did that that magic paintbrush thing, it doesn't always get like the full range uh, of the texture itself. So like you might have some bits like trailing off on the very edges of your textures that turn black because that's the color of the background and like maybe these aren't large enough to uh, cover all that. Uh, if you want to be safe you can do it this way, you can just kind of like paint over the sides carefully or you can have the realization that actually it doesn't even matter because like you're not using the other parts of the texture so you just kind of drown it in green. Everything that you know but then it doesn't look very neat, so let's let's not do that. But just letting you know, it, it doesn't matter too much. We'll just do a real sloppy. You know, there's a leg. There's a leg. There's a leg. Where's a leg? There's a leg. There's a leg. All right. Yes, there's the head. And this way, we just guarantee we won't have any weird stuff hanging on the sides of our texture. We want to be careful with this one because we actually drew things in it. Although that that writing layer... Ah, oh, see? Um, I'm a klutz. The writing layer doesn't matter because it's a separate layer. Just do that. Cool. Alright, save as. I'm sorry, you didn't see all that, I'm guessing, because I didn't center it. Um, I'm becoming fatigued with this this grueling process to make this work of art. Alright, so call it Tutorial Squabble Texture. It's no longer a UV map. It's a straight up texture, right? That's awesome. Alright. So now we have the texture. 
I'm not gonna save that so that we keep the UV map. We got the squabble texture. Now we're gonna go in here, take a look at our boy again. So he's he's looking a little he's looking a little naked. Let's give him a texture. So on this side channel, you should have this um, channel box layer editor, all this stuff. If you don't, you should be able to get it from general editors. Yeah, attribute editor is basically where we want to get to. This should be here by default. If it's not, just look in Windows and you'll find attribute editor. Attribute editor is there. So, remember what I was saying? This gets all convoluted. You can just click right all the way over, but just to save time, let's delete history again. All right, go to Lambert. Lambert is your default shading. If you want to, you can go into Hypershade and you can make yourself a blend. Uh, this is a whole other process. I don't find it super useful. Basically, blend is just like a more reflective -y sort of a thing, so you can do something like this. So you, you hit tab in this weird field here, and then you can type in blends like a, a type of, of texture material. So you're making materials in here. Then you put in file and select projection, and it makes all these windows. These windows are confusing. Um, you don't have to worry about them too much, except for these things that I'm going to do here. So, right. Um, this may not even actually, like, help us. Uh, you know what? No. Yeah. Forget the file thing. Just make a blend. And then we should... Oh, it's weird. We should have a, a viewport. So let's make a viewport. There it is. From the window thing, like I said. Never need a window. Just window it. Hit 6. 6 shows you your textures. So that's important. We want to be able to see our texture on our board. So you'll see we've got Lambert right now. It's kind of flat. Change it to blend. Uh, change it to blend. There we go. Um, it doesn't work if you left click, so middle mouse click it over. It'll get that plus sign. So you do that. Now we got a blend. That's real cool. He looks like an action figure. Just all waxy and gross. And now we're going to go to the blend because it's no longer a Lambert. So we have our own material that we've made. That's exciting. Um, so go to Attribute Editor, look at color, see this black and white checkerboard thing? Click it. Alright, Render Node. So this is a Render Node opening thing. Go to File, because you want a file. Uh, you're going to get this File Attributes thing, Image Name, click the folder. I know this is a lot. Oh, can you guys still see this? Uh, oh god, can you? Hold on. Yeah, you can. Good. Alright. It is, it is far enough over. Alright, so go to wherever you saved your boy, squabble, images, and tutorial squabble texture. There he is. Open that, and hit 6. There you go. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but it did. So you see, uh, there's our beautiful boy. He's a little simple, a little basic, but uh, he's got everything that makes him him that you put in that Photoshop document. If you were a better Photoshop artist, maybe it would look real pretty right now. But this is what we got. So, all right. So now we've got our tutorial squabble. You might be asking you now, how do I get this crab in Unity that I made? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how to do that. There's a send a Unity thing. That's pretty handy. Um, you can also export all, go into the options. The options are the boxes, by the way, so just click the boxes. You can do a Maya ASCII file or a Maya binary. I know you want to do one or the other, usually, when you're saving stuff. Um, but there's a bunch of export options you have. I'm sure they're all for different purposes. FBX, I'm pretty sure, works for what we're trying to do here. Um, we're gonna use the send to unity thing, but yeah, so this is like FBX tutorial squabble and Hopefully that sends all of the information including the, uh, the Texture it doesn't always for me, so I'm not sure apologies if that doesn't work But uh, the safe way you can do all this is just send to unity um, Oh god, I moved it Went over again. Let's get that back in place. Okay so let's do send to Unity, just to show that as well. 
Oh. Um. Oh. Oh, I guess this is awkward. Uh, can we send the FBX file to Unity? Where did we even save it to? This is a, this is a mystery in the making. Uh, Squabble. Maybe I saved it to Squabble Assets. Oh no. Okay, let's let's export. Oh, there it was. Shoot. Uh, export all. Export all. Oh, why did I save it to the horror? That's weird. Because it's default. Because I didn't set my project. That's another th Okay, let's do this real quick. Just because we're, like, so far along anyways. You should have done this to start with. But I'm a bad teacher. So, it's not your fault. It's my fault. Um, make a new project. Change the location. We're just gonna keep it in game dev. Or, you know, let's put in Squabble. This Squabble's where we're at. Or no, we'll make a new one. We'll, we'll call it Tutorial Squabble. Or make a new folder to call it Tutorial Squabble. Cool. Alright, Tutorial Squabble. Call it Tutorial Squabble. That's our, our project. Nice. Now, you're after you've made your project in the project window, which should give you, uh, go here, go here, tutorial squabble. Oh, hmm, now I feel silly. All right, so actually you just select your folder to contain it all in. Uh, I don't think this is gonna work, okay. Fine, it's, it's in a squ tutorial squabble with tutorial squabble, oh wait. Uh, I guess it did merge the folders. Okay, we're good then. So then just set your project to tutorial squabble. So like, just select the folder, hit set, and now it'll automatically, it should have, I guess, already, but now when we save it, it'll go to scenes when we go to save it. So plus tutorial squabble is its own thing. Uh, yeah, like that. So now we have our own scene. Uh, now let's export again to the proper place. I'm just making a mess on my computer, basically. Call it Tutorial Squabble for Unity uh, importing purposes. I'm, I'm real good with name conventions. Um, send a Unity. All. Uh, oh, we choose the Unity project. See, I should also learn how to read. <clears throat> Game dev, uh, game one project, Rhythm Ruga tutorial is what we're working in. Uh, can we just select it from that? That should be the info, right? Oh god, export all. Um, Rhythm Ruga tutorial assets, OG. Oh, I guess it's because I haven't really, yeah. All right, so make like a models folder in in Unity models. Cool. Now that should show up. Models, open. Uh, I guess we make a file name for our FBX now. So it's in models. Call it Squabble Tutorial Boys. Finally home. Go to bed. Okay. So now if we look in models, holy crap. It's our boy. Go to bed. Um, problem is, he... Well, there's a few problems. Alright, so let's address our problems. First off, I have this a lot of the time. Um, Unity... Are my, all my Maya models tend to be really tiny in Unity. So, like, pump this boy up to, like, 150 times this normal setting. That'll make him big enough. We can adjust this. We'll definitely be adjusting this later in the tutorial. I'm just so he's visible, right? So now he's here. He exists. He's in Unity. He can live and laugh and love. If we hit play, the camera will view him in his beautiful visage. It's real emotional. I feel like I've made a new life. Um, now, this is the part where it's a little confusing for me. We want to texture him, so let's just 
we'll do this to start so squabble texture that's a material of course but um what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a new asset and we're gonna take the same um texture that we had oh jeez. We're going to take the same texture that we just made for him in Maya, and we'll just reapply it. And I think based on the information of the UV map and how it's all laid out, I think that inf information's carried over. So as long as we keep the, or we put the file onto the material, it'll do its thing. So what am I looking for here? I'm looking for squabble probably because I didn't actually save the texture over to the new folder. So we got the texture. Okay, this is where it gets weird. All right, put squabble texture on our boy. And now he has the texture. Now put, or the material. Now put the texture on it and it should apply the material to that or it makes its own. I don't know, maybe we didn't even need this. Let's see, materials, yeah. It basically just made our material, material right there. So make a texture folder just to keep everything organized. Put this boy in here. So yeah, you got a boy now. Holy crap, that's so awesome. And he still says I suck at making tutorials. Um, so we got our green uh, bootleg squibble squabble. He's in Unity, he's all ready to become a gameplay object. And uh, if you don't want to do all that, you can go to game object, 3D object, and make a sphere. And that literally will have the same effect. So if you want to save yourself like an hour of fiddling through menus and crap for sake of a squid, uh, if you don't want to do that, just make a sphere. Alright, bye.